Here we have a Dell Alienware motherboard that was mailed over to us from Illinois. This one is Dell Alienware M18 R1. Customer mailed over the motherboard only and not the laptop. And I always mention anytime you mail over a motherboard only, I cannot test the board beyond the faults that I find on the board. You live in the same country. If you care about this laptop being fixed, you should just mail the whole laptop, spend a few dollars more. It's not going to be much more expensive. And there's a higher chance that we will be able to fix the laptop because we can test it. We can make sure everything is running good. But right now, as the board stands, I have no idea what's wrong with the board. I do have experience with Dell Alienware's. Most of them have a short circuit on the DR MOSFETs under the CPU, which causes a failure on the CPU. That's my experience with Dell Alienware's. But this board looks different. It looks like it's a fairly new motherboard. It's not one of those big, huge ones. Small footprint. Let's see what's going on. We're going to start with the charging connector. And the charging connector is right over here. And the charging connector connects all the way right here. I want to look for some MOSFETs near that charging cable. And I do not see any on this side of the board. Let's flip the board and look around the same area on back of the board and right there. We do see the MOSFETs right here. We have four of them. Meter in diode mode. And let me quickly measure over here. And look at this. Short. Like most Alienware laptops I work on. Almost always a short circuit on the power MOSFETs. The DC in power MOSFETs. Now, voltage drop is reading not exactly zero, 0 0.005. It's almost always zero voltage drop, which is an indication that we have a faulty DR MOSFET and possibly a faulty CPU. But in this case, we are reading 0 0.005 voltage drop. That's still a very low number, but unusual. I always see a zero. Now I'm seeing 0 0.005. Let me go to ohms mode. And how many ohms are we reading? We are reading 3 ohms and not 0 ohms. So that's like almost a short, a partial short. It may not be a DR MOSFET issue, or maybe it is. Again, I'm basing this off my experience working on Alienware's. You cannot find this information in books. You cannot find this information online for the most part. You find this information from somebody who has been working on those motherboards for a long time. I still do not consider myself as the absolute expert in the field diagnosing and troubleshooting new Dell Alienware motherboards or whatever the case may be, any device. We go by the experience that I have accumulated over the years, what I should look for, what faults I found on that specific ASUS laptop? Are we gonna have the same fault on this ASUS laptop? And over the years, you build up that database of what could be wrong with the laptop. A lot of times I work on the laptop for two minutes and it's a fix. Or I measure all possible faults that I've went through throughout the years. I do not come across any one of those faults measure voltage rails to an extent some of those newer models not having board view diagrams or schematics board view diagrams are more important but when you do not have neither then we do not go into that rabbit hole somebody else want to figure it out by all means right so let me measure the current sense resistor that we see here. And we are also reading around 
fluctuating between 6 and 10 ohms. That's still a very low reading. What if we try to measure the current sense resistor that we have down here? Twelve ohms. The readings are weird. Look at this. We are reading twenty-three ohms now. Before I was reading three ohms. What's going on? What has changed? Take my probe off, put my probe back on. Twenty-three ohms. Twenty-three ohms. Twenty-three ohms. 23 ohms. So I'm constantly getting 23 ohms now. I do not know how I read 6 ohms before, but we are reading 23 ohms right now. 23 ohms is still low. 44 kilo ohms here. And we should have a high number here. 42 kilo ohms here. So the reading here is incorrect. We should be in the kilo ohms and not in the low ohms reading. Now diode mode beeped, right? Let me measure in diode mode again. It beeped before and it's beeping now. Now we are reading 0 0.016 and not 0 0.005. I do not know if we can inject voltage on a 23 ohm line and still see what's getting hot on the board. Usually you can inject voltage and force voltage on a line that is shorted. We're going to force maybe 1.5 volts through that line and we're going to inspect under a thermal camera and see if anything gets hot on the board. Voltage injection tool on and have that short. Thermal camera on. I'm going to inject at the current sense resistor. And look at this, something got hot right over here. See? It's not a DR MOSFET, it's not the CPU. Something else. Interesting. Okay, so what's here? Possibly a faulty cap. I'm almost 99% sure it's a faulty cap. This one here looks, looks off. Looks discolored. Looks like it's possibly cracked something this capacitor suffered a lot of heat and that's why you see the discoloration or the scars the scars of war let me measure in diode mode right here 0 0.004 and 0 0.004 I bet you $1 million in Monopoly money that this capacitor is faulty. And I said this before, and somebody won, and he wrote in the comments, where's my million dollars in Monopoly money? And the following video I said, I do not know if they even make $1 million in Monopoly money. So somebody sent us like $40 million in Monopoly money, $1 million bill. Maybe I'll make it a habit where I sign those bills and I mail them over to the winners. But who wants my signature anyway, right? Who am I? Now, one thing I can do, which I'm not going to do right now because I want to try my luck, is we can apply a drop of alcohol, inject voltage, and see where alcohol evaporates first. Or I can use my atomizer, spray rosin flux powder, and then see where the powder will melt first or I can have the macro lens on my thermal camera so it can pinpoint which component is getting hot. 101 ways to do it. But I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way based on my instincts and we'll see. Now today it's raining in Northridge. 
I would not say the weather is too cold. But it's not hot. Let me flip that cap. I'm just wondering how the cap is like from the back. Look at this. Look at this line. Okay, so it's obvious, right? Let me zoom in with the Northridge Fix microscope. I can zoom in some more. And you can see that crack, right? You want more zoom? I can do digital zoom. We can see the molecules of that capacitor. But I'm not interested in molecules. That's the power of the Northridge Fix microscope. Look at that zoom. Right now the question is, do we still have a short? And we no longer have a short. So this is ground, the ground part of the capacitor. And this is the positive part, 0 0.4 voltage drop. And that's the proper reading. Let's go back to the MOSFETs. Right here. And now we're going to measure in a couple of places. Let's measure at the current sense resistor. And we have 0 0.4 voltage drop and not 0 0.005. If we go to ohms mode, instead of getting 6 ohms or 23 ohms, now we are reading 223 kilo ohms. 210 kilo ohms. And the short is gone. We solved the issue. So the question is now, what's the value of that capacitor? Most likely a 10 microfarad capacitor at 60 volts. Sometimes viewers ask, what's the voltage of the capacitor that you replaced? We always use 60 volts. You can go up higher on voltage, no problem. But we're going to use an LCR meter to figure out the value. And we're going to measure this one here. It's not recommended to measure it in circuit. Let me see what happens if I measure it in circuit. Sometimes you can get away with it, but you do not know how this capacitor is connected. We have more caps on the top. Meter and capacitance mode. And what value will we read? 1001 microfarads. So we know that cannot be true, right? Huge number probably 10 microfarads. Let me desolder the cap and we can measure it off circuit. I kept the capacitor on the board, soldered to one leg so we do not lose it. Let's wait for the cap to cool down a bit because otherwise we're going to read the wrong measurement. Maybe I can apply some alcohol to cool it down. And yes, 10 microfarads. See? When I measured in circuit, we were reading a huge number in the thousands microfarads. That cannot be true. So now that we removed or disconnected the capacitor, 9.266. Of course, we have the tolerance. It's a 10 microfarads capacitor. Let's replace it. And we're going to call this a fix invoice and mail it back to the customer. Those capacitors are also sold on our site. Very common when fixing laptops along with the microscope, soldering station, braid wick, low melt solder, our amazing NF.flux and NF.flux white. If you do not know the difference, just look up the video. Everything, whatever we use on our bench, we carry and sell. And we do not just sell for the sake of selling and making money, that's part of it, but we sell because we believe in those products and we use them professionally on our bench every day 
Some items are out of stock. We're working on it. The microscope is in stock and one of the best you can get your hands on. You see how I made that cap do some gymnastic moves? Now, I did not apply any plugs. I did not apply any leaded solder. We're just going to use whatever solder is on the board. So we can teach this board a lesson, right? It's all about teaching lessons. So that board does not do it again. Right, so we replaced the cap with a 10 microfarads capacitor, 60 volts. We are done. We're going to invoice and mail this back to the customer. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video. Where did we replace the capacitor at? So those are the DC MOSFETs, and this is where we replaced the caps. Okay, we're done.